Um, all right, and like promised, we do have a very knowledgeable speaker here who is going to kickstart the show before we actually unveil uh, the 50 brands here tonight. We have, and with a loud round of applause, I'd like you to welcome Mr. Rahul Agarwal, Managing Director and CEO, Lenovo for India. He's had over two decades of experience both globally and internationally leading businesses and marketing functions. And Mr. Agarwal, if you're happy with the applause that you got, we can move ahead. Otherwise, I would recommend no. <laughs> thank you. We're getting started. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pitch and uh, Anurag, for inviting me to uh, do this uh, keynote. Uh, I can tell you it's lovely to spend an evening uh, where you're not uh, working either to generate more revenues or to generate more profits. So I'm hoping that I'm really going to enjoy this evening with you guys. Uh, the subject of uh, marketing and branding is a vast subject and um, my belief is that anybody can talk a lot about it and there, is, there are no set of rules that you can talk about that you can follow diligently to make it a success. It's a bit of art, it's a bit of science. Uh, what I am going to try and attempt today is to give you a perspective that I've built over the years. And, I, and I've been fortunate enough to do a few roles which have uh, given me uh, a very unique angle to this whole field of marketing and branding. I've done role in my earlier uh, part of the career as a marketing manager. I've also uh, led the marketing for Lenovo when it just started in India and when nobody knew about uh, Lenovo and they thought, hey, it was some cheap Chinese uh, brand. I've also uh, led the worldwide marketing communications for Lenovo for three years. And last couple of years, of course, I've seen marketing from a very different angle. Sometimes uh, something that is uh, avoidable expense too. Something that I am very passionate about. But as a, as a, as a primary uh, provider of revenues and profitability, you sometimes have that view too. So I, I was talking to Anurag in the morning and uh, what he said is that, look, uh, we could make it interactive and that's how I uh, really like it. So I'll try and, you know, share my thoughts with you. And as I said, I do not claim to be a master. I do not think uh, it's easy to be a master of this field. Uh, it's, it's constantly evolving. There are multitude of views, multitude of perspectives and what works for one company and one individual may not work for the others. So with that disclaimer, I'm going to just uh, share with you what I think of, of this uh, subject. Now, as I said, uh, you know, we can talk about this for hours, uh, but what I thought is that maybe I could focus my uh, speech or my, my address to you on one very specific element of building brand, which is how to build a brand through customer experience. But before I, I dive into it, uh, can we move on to the next slide? Can you give me the clicker? Yeah. So let's uh, let's just uh, spend a minute on the on the on the subject, and I want to just uh, capture a couple of words here. First is uh, challenging. I, I without a doubt, uh, building a brand is a challenge. It's always been a challenge. I myself uh, seen it when I did marketing roles. And, and the fact is that customers don't really care uh, for you as a brand. Customers really care about their needs and wants. They care about their gratification. They care about their experience. So when you want to build a brand, you're being intrusive at, to a large extent. And therefore, it is always challenging. And the other key word is distracted. Uh, I think everyone knows how the world has changed. Uh, about 10 years ago when smartphones came, they changed everyone's world. And today, husband and wives uh, have a tough time uh, getting undivided attention uh, in my office, and I'm sure you do it too. In, in meetings, however crucial they are, people are always fiddling with their phones, and, and that's just one aspect of being distracted. So clearly, this is very, very relevant. How to deal with this? The world is going to stay like this. I get, I get very upset when I see my son on the phone all the time. But the fact is that I have to accept it and I'm going to be a parent. I have to learn to be a good parent with him being a distracted son all the time. So, 
how does it work? Okay. So I, I thought we could just start uh, uh, this with a with the context. You know, it's always good to see a slightly long term context of uh, how is the the humanity evolving, if I may say. And if you if you see this uh, slide, it, it it talks about some major trends which have happened over the last uh, century. And these changes do not happen suddenly. They evolve as, as civilizations evolve, as human behavior evolves. And today, people are saying that it is the age of the consumer. And I'm sure this is not the first time you've heard about it. We've been hearing about it for maybe a decade. But there are some very good uh, reasons why we should uh, believe that. Firstly, the whole word of mouth has taken a very different meaning with social media. You have a good experience, you can share it with thousands, lakhs of people the same moment and vice versa. Secondly, especially in the Indian context, the decision makers are, are youngsters. I remember when I used to do marketing, I used to look at an average buyer of a PCS, uh, you know, 40 to 55 year old uh, individual and you, you, you know, you would organize your life around that consumer in a certain way. Today, everyone is under 30, if I talk about my category. And these people are more demanding. These people are not easy to be convinced. They, they, are, they have an element of risk taking. They want to do research. And therefore, to get them on your bandwagon is far more difficult because they have their own, own mind which is uh, much uh, uh, stronger. Third, People say that the real age of, of discovery or the real age of innovation is behind us. Very rarely do you see innovations happening, maybe once in five years. And if innovations happen, they are very quick to be replicated by competition. So as a brand, you always are on the back foot. You're al always on the back foot because there are two or three or, you know, if I look at phones, 70 other brands who are pretty much trying to offer something very similar to what you offer. And therefore, customer has choice. And if customer has choice, customer has the, uh, you know, the decision making in his uh, hand. And therefore, he, he's, a, he's a, the real uh, uh, decision maker in the journey, unlike you. So if you look at these three or four points, it, it, is, it is fairly obvious that customers today are far more powerful in this whole uh, process of purchase. Now this, uh, this just uh, further makes the point that uh, customers are distracted because there are so many avenues, you know, the, with the advent of new mediums, social media, websites, phones, Customers are always shuffling from one end to another. And therefore the traditional approach of, you know, how do I build my awareness, convert into consideration, into preference, into purchase and loyalty may not be the optimal one. It may work for a few organizations, but it may not work for, for many others. Therefore the key really is to understand how the customer is doing this journey. What, what he or she is undergoing, what is the thought process they're undergoing when they go to a website, then they go to a retail, then they do search marketing, then they go to a, uh, to a, 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 you know, a, a referral website to get feedback on things and then again go back to the retail. You know, we found out, for example, that 70% of the people who buy in retail, buy computers from our retail stores, do extensive research on the net before they come and decide. So the battle is not really being fought at the retail counter today, but the battle is being fought at multiple places, also at retail. You know, brilliant salespeople can still turn around, but the battle is now spread over multiple places and that's a big, big challenge to the marketeers. So if, if, if customer experience is what, is what we want to really uh, show and what we want to choose as, as a point of differentiation because, you know, the, the differentiation otherwise is, 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 is difficult 
And if we say that the customer journey is complicated and the customer is distracted and the customer is powerful, then who owns this customer experience? And this is, of course, provided that, you know, you, uh, you know, as, as brand custodians, as marketing custodians of your organization, decide that you will take the, the path of, of customer experience. Now, somebody who, uh, who sells a product which has a life of a few minutes, let's say chewing gum, may look at it very differently. But somebody who sells, let's say, a refrigerator, the life of which is 15, 20 years, may look at it very differently. But the key question is, who is the custodian? And um, let me tell you, my, my, my belief is always, uh, when I, whether I was a marketing manager or CMO or, or now, I've always felt that building the brand is not the number one job for the CMO or for the marketing department or for the advertising uh, friends. It is the number one job of the CEO. And therefore, customer experience, if it, is, if it has to be the one that will create differentiation, has to be the number one job of the CEO. The CEO has to champion it. The CEO has to galvanize the organization to make sure that everyone is aligned to it. However, a CEO will agree to it, but not, not spend a lot of time on it, because that's a practical reality. And in that context, when the CEO is willing to lead it, somebody has to truly embrace it and make sure that the entire organization sings a song and dances to that tune. And that, in my opinion, has to be the CMO, and that has to be the, the marketing function. Uh, and it has to go much beyond what CMO today does, because customer experience is about what happens in retail, what is the website experience, what is the experience of people on the call center? Now, call center is one of the most underestimated uh, 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 bridge or, or platform to talk to a customer. Now, in the context of customers being distracted, that is one time when you have the undivided attention of a customer. Undivided. He's excited. He's emotional, or she's emotional because they have some issue or there's some query. You have their ears. But most organizations, including us till some time back, used to have a target of closure time. We used to minimize the time that our call center agents are spending with the customer. We never took, took interest in the quality of people, the script of the people talking. But they were talking as Lenovo. Right? And I'm sure you all have uh, call centers, either pre-sales or post-sales. And just give it a thought as to who in the organization is really spending time on what the customer experience is. So it, it goes much beyond what marketing does. It goes much beyond what typically the organization looks at. And if, if the customer experience has to be the pivot to build the brand, then it has to be, of course, led by the CEO but championed by CMO by getting every part of the organization together to be aligned on it. Now, I'll, I'll just spend a couple of minutes on sharing with what we did uh, at uh, uh, Lenovo. Uh, we, of course, realized that um, uh, we've got a long, long way to go before we can be proud of the way we do things. Let me just say it as, as simple as possible. And here the context is what customers thought about our, us as a brand and what customers uh, you know, uh, thought about us as, as an aspirational brand. And we did a very honest study through the, through the whole, whole journey. And, and you can see that, you know, right from the beginning of the journey till the end, we found that there were many areas where competition was actually better than us. So if you see, uh, a full, full black circle is, is good. And where we are, uh, the arrow is up which means that we are better than competition. So it was a, it was a very honest uh, audit that we did, uh, which uh, went on for months, and it required even uh, me to go in and talk to customers and partners and, and get that. And we found out that there were many people who loved Lenovo, but there were as many people who did not like us, who didn't like the way we dealt with them in the retail stores, who didn't like the way we spoke with them, who didn't like the way we solved their problems, and sometimes they didn't like the fact that there was a problem in the product. And uh, we thought we should do something about it. So 
we, you know, me and the entire, uh, the, the senior management team, we spent almost 24 hours uh, uh, in, the, in the call center. So we took calls. I took dozens of calls, spoke to our eight customers. And uh, that, I can tell you, was one of the best experience that I had. Till then, I really uh, didn't get a feeling that I was doing a real job. And after that, the way we run our call centers totally changed. Um, the customers, the, the, we reached out to almost 7 million customers through that uh, campaign that we did because we went live on Facebook, we did a bit of social media to tell people that, hey, the entire senior management is listening. And we were able to convert a lot of negative emotion to positive emotion. Now, of course, that was a one-time event, but you got to do a lot more of these things to really, you know, be, be, be liked by, by your customers. Yeah, this is the, the service uh, uh, campaign that, you know, that we did, that I was talking about. So let me, um, you know, come uh, to the end uh, of, of uh, my address, and then hopefully we'll have some questions that I, Sanjay Anurag, maybe all of us can uh, uh, collectively discuss. So first, I'm assuming that this, this community by and large is marketing. Is that right? You're all marketing? So I, you know, I don't want to be standing here and just be thought provoking for the sake of it because it's very easy to do that, but it's very difficult to actually get really provoked. But I want to leave three or four messages here because that's all that human mind can retain. Probably after a week, uh, we'll, we'll maybe retain one or two points. So my, my urge is that, you know, try and let's try and remember one or two things and see if they are relevant to our daily life. First is the role has to be redefined. The marketing function today, and I don't want to get dramatic because not everything is true for everyone. It's, it's basically a spectrum. You've got to see where are you in the spectrum. You've got to be somewhere in the middle. The, the left and the right is, left is past and maybe the right is future. But you've got to understand and you've got to realize, and I say you, I, I'm saying I too, that we are no more the author of the brand. I think the days are over when you could broadcast, when you could uh, really spin a story and uh, customers would, would just listen to you. And uh, the role of uh, marketers and CMO has to be much, beyond, much more than just marketing communications. That's, that's point number one. And this has to be not just, uh, re, uh, not just discovered by you, but it has to be agreed by the CEO of the organization and the entire CXO chain of the organization. Second point, <clears throat> got to be clear what is the, the differentiation. Now we, for example, realize that when it comes to computers, we like to believe, I can actually talk about 15 things that are unique about Lenovo laptops or ThinkPads or our phones or Moto Mods or Yoga Books. But the fact is that customers, uh, you know, at a high level do not really care too much about these fine differences. But what they do care about is the experience. And when they hear about a good experience of a product that lasts four or five years, I think that is what truly, truly influences them. So, the thought that I'm going to leave here is that, do you think your organization would want to go this way? Because this is far more sustainable. This is, I can tell you, having done a quarter of the journey, that it is not the most difficult thing to do. But if you do it, it is very difficult to replicate. And this is the only way, in my opinion, real loyalty can, can happen. Oops, did I do something? Yeah, okay. The third point, go back to the uh, slide, please, where you know, we were talking about the customer journey. What is extremely important uh, for organization is, and marketeers have to lead that, is to really, really understand the customer mindset, the customer journey. You know, what is the customer thinking? What are the customer needs? You know, go back, this is actually wonderfully, uh, you know, going back to the basics of marketing. Uh, and the basics of marketing is to, you know, help people fulfill their needs and wants and demands. 
but but how do you do it so with the change context and the changing context i think it's important to spend a lot of time money resources in really understanding talking to the consumers doing research understanding what goes into their mind under uh, understanding what what really is the dynamics that goes on in a retail store or when people are are uh, you know browsing you know there are things like people decide in 10 seconds whether they want to be uh, on a web page or not in 4 seconds people uh, you know decide whether the brand appeals to them or not when they go to uh, a, a, a website so these things are are really changing the dynamic and it's important for successful marketers to be able to write a book on their customers when i was younger we used to say can you draw a pen picture of your customer and if uh, you know people would be able to draw uh, or uh, create one page about the customer we would say hey you know you're the dude and you'll do well i would say today uh, a, a good marketer should be able to write a book on on the customer and uh, lastly and this uh, sounds a little motherly and i apologize for that because i, I you know that's not my approach but uh, i've been a part of many marketing uh, discussions in different roles where people would forget what they are but they would spend hours and hours on what would make sense to be positioned as right and and they would look at vacant positioning points in the customer's mind looking at market and competition and would want to occupy that and then they would rush into finding brilliant ways to communicate and ad agencies you know would of course do what the marketers would tell them but because of all that we we, we just saw social media the empowerment of the customer the customer being young the cluttered customer the the fact that differentiation is low i think it's time to be really authentic and do some soul searching as to what do we stand for and i can tell you that that question is very difficult i can stand here and tell you that for many of our product categories we struggle to find what do we really stand for what are we that customer would come to us not go to our our, our good competition and i think um, uh, it's it's something that is required it's something that is very very difficult it's something that we will people will fail to do when they start to do but uh, if brands have to stay relevant in the changing times uh, this is one approach that uh, would do well so i, I guess that's uh, that's what i had uh, do we want to take any questions uh, now thank you mr agarwal yes uh, requested to please raise your hands in case you'd like to you can offer an applause later we are not yet done with mr agarwal yet we need you to answer some questions so if there are any questions please raise your hand um introduce yourself for the company that you represent yes ram we will come to you but i do have a question um mr agarwal so uh like we all know that and you mentioned as well when somebody comes to buy a product at one of your retail stores has already done their due diligence online and a lot of times we you know we figure that the price at which it's available on e-commerce platforms maybe much lower as compared to your retail stores so how or maybe if it if it doesn't affect lenovo but at least if you can uh, talk about it holistically uh, how does a marketer handle something like this no right affect lenovo very much uh, you know 20% of the computers today are sold on online and one third of the phones today are sold online so it 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 affects us a lot uh, it's something that as a brand you got to be agnostic to it's channels different channels fighting for market share it's like when the lfrs came when the chromas and the reliance digitals came uh, the the traditional retailer cried because they had the muscle that they didn't have so it's a new channel and people are getting worried about it as a brand you got to play fair you got to make sure as much as you can that you know there is price parity and there are no disadvantages being given to the larger uh, players but i think it is the battle that people have to fight uh, smaller retailers are getting affected online sales are going up that's a reality and there's nothing that you can do because that is how the world is evolving okay 
So you're endorsing unlike a few other brands that have actually gone on record and say that, you know, these may not be authentic products online which are being sold and you have to buy it from our authorized retail yeah, so, uh, outlet. You know, we did all that at the beginning. I think uh, nobody knew how this whole, how this online world is uh, evolving. Now, you, know, you buy something on Flipkart or Amazon, it's, it's authentic. And I tell my friends and families that, look, you do the comparison and buy, uh, you know, what makes sense to you. All, all channels are uh, legal. Sure, yes, Rahul, do we have the, uh, I'll hand over my mic to you, here. So it, it was indeed very inspiring, uh, the best, uh, what you have done, what Renovo has achieved in particular in the Indian market. Coming from what you said, uh, chief Chinese product to very reputed brand, it is indeed a very big achievement. So my question is, uh, based on uh, your white good experience and uh, laptop and uh, you know uh, mo mobile phone experience what is your suggestion for other products uh, which are more of experiential in kind uh, say for example it may be healthcare it may be in you know any other segment so which pr primarily provides experience so what would be your advice for those brands you know, it's dangerous to give advice on something you don't have a direct experience on. Uh, so I'm not going to really, uh, you know, bite that one. But I would say that it fits, you know, even more into what I said, that brands which are service brands, which are experiential brands, then customer experience can be the differentiator that we spoke about, even more for a product uh, organization or a product brand. We have one there. Right there. Hi, Rahul. Uh, my name is Raj Kavan from Silver Push Technologies. Uh, Rahul, one sees a lot of uh, disruptive innovations across the multiple discipline of business, whether it is manufacturing and everything else related to design and R&D and everything else. Of course, uh, the innovations that one observes there also puts pressures on marketing. No doubt about that. And even, even the time when uh, you were into the marketing role and things like that, the distribution channels which used to be there earlier, uh, which was a brick and mortar and the investment that really went into it, had a particular strategy in place. Now you have the entire digital innovative spaces like uh, the e-commerce perspective, where the complete change uh, is possibly required uh, in uh, the way one looks at marketing the way Philip Kotler had defined at one point in time. Do you think with the uh, uh, innovations that one sees elsewhere, marketing also needs to rethink and possibly uh, strategize in a manner which takes cognizance of the multi-screens? Of course, Lenovo also is quite responsible for the multi-screens that has been created and the disruptive uh, audiences that you said. Yeah, look, without a doubt, I think that's the key point that I wanted to make today, uh, that uh, marketers need to change, starting from the way they look at their roles and the way we the way we connect to the customer, uh, you know, broadcasting is going to become less and less relevant. And reaching out to customers uh, at a platform where they're really listening to you, where you have credibility with real life experiences is going to go up. So if you are able to, you know, cultivate, curate your customer experience and capture it and find a way to disseminate it. Uh, let me give you a very simple example. Today, you know, if you, if you spend some time on TV, because TV is still, I'm told, 62% of, uh, of the advertising in this country, and it's not really going down. Uh, you have creative stories. The, the key platform that people use is, at, you know, entertainment, because the client says, hey, I want ad which has memorability. I want, I want to entertain my customers which in my personal opinion is too ambitious because your job as a marketer is not to entertain. Because you end up entertaining people who are not relevant. People who are relevant to your category at that point of time are not looking for entertainment. They're looking for real, good, important message. So for Lenovo, it could mean, for example, that instead of you know, having a ad with a celebrity, which I'm guilty of introducing to the PC industry, we actually, get real life people to talk about their experiences. The ads would be boring, 
but I think they will resonate more. And they, win, they may not win awards, but I can tell you they may, they'll win more sales. So likewise, technology, the way technology is, 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 is uh, really everywhere, marketers need to know how it's evolving. SEO is a big science. Today I'll give you an example that knocked me out when I got to know about it. It's scary actually, at least to me it was scary. So there's a technology available. So if you are sitting in your living room with your family and you see a Lenovo ad, right? And you, your, your smartphone of course is always next to you. We can make sure that seven out of 10 times or seven out of 10 people who have seen our ad in the next half an hour when they pick up the phone, they will see a Lenovo online ad on the smartphone. Now that is scary because it's, it's kind of almost invading your privacy. But this is, these are the kind of technologies that marketers need to be aware of and, you know, be there. So the, the whole TV alone or print alone or outdoor, the whole idea of 363 is, is, is evolving and is changing pretty rapidly. Yeah. I think we'll take just one more question. Yes, the lady here. We'll give the lady a chance to ask a question and then wrap up. Hi, I'm Vikas from Godrej. I head sustainability there. So my question to you is, does sustainability play a role in marketing and marketing communications these days in India? Sustainability? Yeah. Like for Lenovo, if conflict minerals, would that be a reason for you to have a plank on marketing on conflict minerals in your product? Yeah, see, we can take the route. It is, it is not a route taken by a lot of marketeers. And uh, uh, it takes a bit of courage and conviction and somebody higher up to take the route. Uh, but there are companies who've done it. P&G has, has done it. I remember we ran a campaign in 2006 where we tied up with Cry and we said that, look, uh, every you know, PC that you buy, um, you know, we donate a certain amount of money to Cry. And when we you know, do sales slash marketing to our B2B customers, we talk a lot about what we are doing to create a sustainable environment. How do we uh, you know, really take care of the old products, the e-waste, what kind of packaging we do which is environmental friendly. Uh, the reality is, and it's a crude uh, reality, that it's still not the top one, two, three reasons why customers make a choice. And, Unfortunately, when we work for a commercial setup, we go by what motivates people and we get motivated by that rather than maybe what is the larger good for the society. Thank you. Does that answer your question? All right. Thank you, Mr. Agarwal. Thank, Thank you for you. taking the time for being here. Requested to please stay back. We'd like to acknowledge you. Requested to please stay back. And yes, we can do better with the applause. Now is the time to acknowledge the gentleman here who started with his information and his experience with you request mr rajiv biotra from in the sun times to please come up on stage and offer a token of appreciation on behalf of the exchange for media group to mr agarwal for having taken the time for being here